everyone! This is Janelle, also known as My Happy Day. So as most of you know, I moved back home from Korea at the end of March. And of course, when you move to and from countries, there's culture shock. There's the culture shock when you move to the other culture. And of course, there is reverse culture shock when you come back. Now there's different parts of culture shock and the reverse culture shock. I mean, other than speaking another language and just sort of the daily parts of your life, one thing that I kind of noticed is just how ordinary I felt. Not that I think I'm uninteresting or boring, but it's just when you live in a different culture or a homogenous society like Korea is, I mean, especially as um, someone who is not Asian, you really tend to stick out. Now this can be good or bad for different people depending on their situation. So there were different things like, for example, um, my students, mostly the girl students, would compliment me on things that they thought were beautiful or features they wanted to have. Like they'd say, oh teacher, your face is so small. Which, by the way, if you didn't know, in Korea having a small face is just like the best. I don't really think my face is all that small, but you know, I'll take the compliment. Oh, teacher, your eyes are so big or your nose is so high. So I just sort of got used to this praise. Not that I would get it all the time, but just, you know, when I did receive it, which was, you know, I guess often enough, like I felt good about myself. Because in the U.S., like people don't normally just say that sort of thing. I mean, not like new people you meet. Of course your friends are going to be nice to you, like, oh, you look so good in that dress today, or I love your hair. So I don't want to fish for compliments or anything, it's just that I just sort of got used to that sort of thing coming up. And I just sort of got used to feeling kind of special, and I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm not being modest, but like, for example, you meet someone new, hi, how are you, blah, 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 oh, what are your hobbies? And I'd say, oh, well, I like reading, and I like art, and I like to exercise. And of course, they'd say, oh, okay, what kind of exercise? And i say, oh, well, I like kickboxing and soccer. And they'd just be like, oh, you do kickboxing? You do soccer? Because just girls in Korea generally, they're not into sports. It's not the same. I don't know what it's like maybe in European countries. It's probably very similar, is that it's just girls play sports here. Like, I played sports sports and gym, and I did after-school sports, and I did competitive sports, and that sort of thing. It's not that uncommon. So if here I was like, oh, I played soccer in elementary school or middle school, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, me too. But in Korea, when I'd say, oh, yeah, you know, I play soccer every week, they'd be like, wow, you know, that's so cool, and I can't believe you do that, and blah, blah, blah. And I also don't really think I'm much of a player anyway, but then my friends would say, oh, Janelle, she's such a good player, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know, I just like the feeling of something that is so common in the U.S., like, it really made me sort of, you know, cool when I was in Korea. So I guess this is sort of a common thing. I mean, often when you meet someone from another culture and you start talking to each other about your lives, I mean, of course you find your own life very ordinary and common, but someone else might find it extremely interesting. So that's it for today for this topic. I mean, of course there's other facets of culture shock and reverse culture shock that I could talk about, but I will save those for another day. Thanks for watching. See ya!